church family and friends, and Happy New Year. I say that, although at this point, I think I would settle for normal New Year. Maybe we're putting too much pressure on this year to be happy. Uh, I'd settle for mundane New Year. You know, a new year without all of the drama and disease. A new year without all of the anger and the hatred that 2020 brought to us. So we're going to begin our new year together in song with Angels we have heard on high. Now there's a line in there that talks about how the mountains echo back the song of the angels. So how about we start our new year like that? Echoing to the world the heavenly praise of Jesus. And perhaps it truly will be a happy new year. <laughs>
two, three, four, five, six. Good morning, Fair Church family and friends. Happy New Year! The first scripture reading from today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Again, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And the Word of God says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when he rose and had come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, 
for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the shire was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the shire with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been born in a dream not to go back to Hero, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, my friend, in this new year, I invite you to close your eyes and let us pray together at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're going to give you thanks for this new year. Thank you, Lord, for the new sunshine, for the new day that you uh, provide to us, that, that we are able to see, that we, uh, we are able even to touch the, the nature, Father. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for everything, Father, that we have at this moment. We initiated this year, Lord, with the blessings uh, that you continue giving us every single day. Father, we pray at this moment that you can continue to keep our church running and our ministries continue running, Lord, as we expected. Father, thank you for the great opportunity that you are giving us, Lord, to work for you, for your people, Father, through our church, Father. Give us words of hope and allow us through the Holy Spirit, Lord, to continue giving words of hope and peace and joy and love and redeem, Lord, for to everybody, Father, to every single person. Help us, Lord, to continue extending your kingdom. Thank you, Father, for this community. Thank you, Father, for your people. Thank you, Father, for your church. Thank you, Father, for our lives. We pray, Lord, for our family who are uh, surround us or for those who are not around us. We pray, Lord, that you can continue to keep them safe and healthy as we are. Father, thank you for this time. And thank you, Father, for this church again. And guide us because we want your instruments in your hands. Continue, Lord, giving us the strength that we need to continue extending your kingdom for the healing of the world. And together, Lord, we pray that prayer that you taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now in Spanish. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Vénganos hoy tu reino y hágase tu voluntad, así la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, así como nosotros también perdonamos a aquellos que nos ofenden. Mas no nos dejes caer en la tentación, mas líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, 
Y todos decimos amén. Thank you. God bless you. Good morning, First Church family and friends. And welcome to this, our first worship service of the year. And what a great way is to begin a year celebrating together with the sacrament of baptism. You know, time is flying. And we also, we are close around eight to 10 months of keeping social distancing and wearing masks. And seems that we all are changing. But the good news today is that God's love still remains for each one of us. Jesus continues extending His grace upon us, and today Jesus is extending that grace upon the life of Easton Jeffrey Bryan, who is here through this gift of baptism. Through the gift of baptism, God initiated us into Christ's holy church. So let us celebrate today the welcoming to the family of faith to Easton Jeffrey Bryan, who is here with his parents, Jeffrey and Christina, and is presented also by her godmother, Diana Moll, and also with his little, his older sister as well. So I have some questions for all of you this morning. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? And your answer is, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And your answer is, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And your answer is, I do. I do. Will you nurture this little kid in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? And your answer is, I will. Now, my friends, to the whole congregations, also I have some questions for you this morning. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And answer is, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this family now before in your care? So let us say together, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this family with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. So let us give thanks at this moment over the water. Dear God, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit and bless those who receive this gift from you. Bless them with peace and joy. Bless them with your grace and mercy so that they may continue walking by faith in this journey of life. Easton Jeffrey Bryan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and also in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Easton Jeffrey Bryant, the Holy Spirit were within you, that being born through the water and the Spirit, that you may live all your days in grace and peace, that you may live 
and grow as a faithful disciple in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Members of the household of God, I commend this family, the Brian family, including their oldest daughter, um, Easton, as well. As a new member of the family of Christ, I commend them to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Easton, Jeffrey Bryan, we give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all that God already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. Now the congregation respond. As members together, with you in the body of Christ, we renew our commitment to live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, that in everything God may be glorified. Now, to the Brian family and relatives who are here as well, let us pray the final blessing. Please extend your hands over the boy. May the Lord blessings be upon each member of this family and upon us. Now I will send all of you with the blessings of the Father, with the blessings of the Son, and with the blessings of the Holy Spirit to share God's love, peace, and joy, the joy that you all have in your heart. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. So I really like the Christmas strings of lights that we've used as a family these last few years. Uh, they are these elegant little copper wires with dots of LED light spread along them. And I find them to be very easy to use, uh, very versatile. We can put them up in our tree along other uh, wreathing or to, to light up some of our other Christmas displays like our nativity scene or the collection of Santa figurines. And I, I don't really mean to sound like a commercial, um, but... Uh, I, I share that because this year, as I put them up, I thought to myself, these lights don't seem to be as bright as they used to. They don't seem to put out this bright, bright shine of light like, like they did when I first got them. And I don't know why. I don't know what's happened. I'm not an electrical engineer. They're not battery powered. It's not like needing a new battery in them. They plug into the wall. And I don't know if there's anything that can be done about it. But I've been thinking about these lights through the season, and not just because of their decorative value, but I've been thinking about them perhaps as a metaphor for our spiritual life that sometimes it can grow dim, that it might not be as bright and shiny as it once was. I, I think about some of the strongest parts of our faith, some of the most uh, wonderful tenets of the Christian faith, that God became human, that we get to have a relationship with the creator of the universe, that God was in Jesus and showed us the wonder of unconditional love. There is the great comfort and relief of sins being forgiven. And there's also the instruction of how to live as one of God's children, one that's been loved and redeemed, forgiven by Jesus, and, and that those plans, that those guidelines are not some ambiguous, unknowable uh, thing, but, but they are clear and certain and understandable for our lives. I mean, it's clear as love God before anything and then love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, that's pretty clear. And do to others as you would have them do to you. That's pretty clear and knowable. Doable is another thing, but, but knowable and understandable. Absolutely. That God's plans aren't hidden for us. 
Those are some of the brightest lights of our faith, aren't they? But have they dimmed within us? Do they, at different times in our lives, dim within our very spirits? I think about my string of lights. I don't know why they dimmed, but I can guess some of the reasons why perhaps the light of our faith can dim within us. Maybe faith isn't as exciting as it once was. You know, maybe we had a mountaintop experience and and then everyday life happens. Maybe it is um, that we have become distracted by the world and we aren't paying as close of attention to God. Maybe we've been forgetful that we are forgiven, or maybe we've let our sinful nature just kind of sweep over us and take us over once again, and we are trying to hide from God. Kind of like Adam and Eve did in the garden, right? (laughs) Where are you, God says. And... um, Uh, What if we're just coming off of a hard year in which so much of our communal life has been changed and lost? Any one of those things, and even more, can dim faith within us, perhaps dim that light that comes from that faith. And we become like my string of lights, not quite so bright and shiny. It's happened to probably every single (laughs) follower of God. I think about Moses. You know, he had led the Israelites out of Egypt. He performed miracles and wonders to get them out of Egypt and and into a, a free life that God had for them. And And then in trying to rule over all of these multitude of people, he became very weary. He was overworked by listening to uh, the, the complaints that people had against each other. And I can imagine that perhaps that wonder of having spoken with God and then God's Um, servant in such a very special way was dimmed inside of him as he listened to this person and that person fight over a sheep or something like that. Maybe he was burned out a little bit. You know, that burned out, dimmed light. It happened to Elijah, that's for sure. Elijah was very zealous for God and had a showdown with the priests of Baal and showed them that there was only one true God of the universe, and that was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who showed up and accepted the offering at the altar. And then he was exhausted. He fled for his life after a battle with the priests of Baal. And he found himself in the wilderness, played out completely. He was done. I can imagine how drained he was of that light. I think about King David. You know, he was this... um, he, he, he was God's chosen king. He, he, he was a man after God's own heart, and yet he wasn't perfect. And after a time of temptation and, and succumbing to that temptation of adultery, he hid himself from God. And Nathan, the prophet, called him back out. And he was so besieged by his sin that he says, it's it's ever before me. It's like it won't go away. And he cried out to God, Psalm 51, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And what about Judas? 
something dimmed for sure inside of Judas in order to lead him to betray Jesus. If there was a light that led him to follow Jesus in the first place, something happened, whether it was his own mindset, his own set of expectations, something happened and it dimmed within him. The failures of our own spiritual lives is why I love the introduction to the Gospel of John so much. Now, John speaks in a very different way about the incarnation of God in Jesus Christ. We don't get the birth narratives like we do in Luke and Matthew. We don't get the star and the magi. We don't get the angels and the shepherds. What John does is he tells the story differently to talk about the eternal <laughs> origins of Jesus from the very beginning. We get this narrative that is about Jesus' eternal nature. So let's listen from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Hear this word of the Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the peace, people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the most hopeful lines for me in my spiritual life is in this passage, John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There is no diminishing of this light. There is no extinguishing of this light. The darkness of sin and death has not, cannot, and will not overcome this light. The passing of time has not dimmed the light. The volatility of human emotion has not covered this light. This is why it gives me such hope, because I'm not hoping in myself and my own experiences. I'm not hoping in my own light. I'm hoping in in something that is eternal, a light that always has been and always will be. Remember how I said about my string of lights that I, I not only didn't know why they were dimmed, but I didn't know if there was anything that I could do about it. Well, we might be able to pinpoint in our spiritual lives what has caused our spiritual lives to dim. 
And I know that there is something that we can do to address our own spiritual dimming. And that is to renew. Renew the connection. Renew the covenant. Renew our connection to the very light of the world that came to dwell among us. And so I want us to take an opportunity today for covenant renewal. Covenant renewal has long been a part of the Methodist tradition. John Wesley asked that the first Methodists use the time of a new year as an opportunity to renew the covenant within themselves. Not that, remember that God needs to renew the covenant. God doesn't ever walk away from the covenant, but we humans need to renew the covenant for sure. And, and this service that has been a part of our Methodist tradition, this straightforward nature of this service leads followers straight to the heart of the faith and finds its place in the human heart. John Wesley journaled about it. January 1st, 1775, he wrote, it was an occasion for a variety of spiritual experiences. I do not know that we ever had a greater blessing. Afterwards, many desired to return thanks either for a sense of pardon, for full salvation, or for a fresh manifestation of his graces healing all their backslidings. Now, I'm going to lead us through a portion of the covenant renewal service. Um, it, it's just a portion, obviously. I'll read aloud um, a part of it in the bold portion that you'll see on the screen. I invite you to say along with me. Um, I encourage you, though, to look at the entire covenant renewal service. You can find it online simply by searching using the words covenant renewal, uh, United Methodist Church, or UMC, and it'll take you to a website from Discipleship Ministries. And you can read through the whole thing. But for today, I pulled out some of the key components for us to share in. And so before we begin, I invite you to take a moment first and center yourself. Kind of quiet yourself down. Stop thinking about what you're going to do next. Come into the awareness of the condition of your own spirit. Come into an awareness of your relationship with God. Where has your zeal or your faith dimmed? What needs to be refreshed or renewed? And so let us begin. Having a full, life-giving relationship with God means putting away our idols, selfish will, and evil ways, as acknowledged in our baptism. When we are asked if we renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world and repent of sin, when we're asked to accept the power that God gives us to resist evil, injustice, and oppression, and when we're asked to confess Jesus Christ as Savior and put our whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as Lord. And so I call you today to renew or to join in covenant with God. Let us begin. Let us pray. Oh, blessed Jesus, I come to you hungry, broken, and spiritually blind and naked. I am tarnished by sin, and therefore, if it were only up to me, I would be unable to be in a relationship with you. But your love for me is unparalleled, and you have invited me into relationship. So with all my heart, I accept you and take you to be my Lord, because you are my Savior. Therefore, I acknowledge I am no longer my own, but thine. 
Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. Glory be to you, O God the Father. From this day forward, I look upon you as my God and Father, knowing that you are always looking for ways to recover sinners like me. Glory be to you, O God the Son. You have loved me and washed me from my sins in your own blood, and you are my Savior and Redeemer. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit. By the power of your hand, you have turned my heart away from sin and back to you. O holy and powerful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are now my covenant Lord, and through your infinite grace, I am your covenant servant. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. I pray that you let the meaning and the power of this covenant have time and space in your spirit for renewal and a bright and shining light. God bless you. In this new year, we probably all have hopes and dreams for sure. My hope and my dream for First Church is for our ministry together to grow in our relevance and effectiveness in bringing hope and healing to a broken and hurting world in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so I want us to take a moment at this time and say a prayer over the offerings that we will bring this year. Uh, that we bring them to the throne of the Lord and offer them to God's use. So let's take a moment and pray. Lord Jesus, we offer to you the tithes and offerings of this year with our dreams that they will be used by you to further your kingdom, to serve your purposes in this world, so that your name may be glorified. In the name of Christ we pray, amen.
Before we close, a couple of announcements. First of all, we do have a communion service today at 1115. We will do this via a Zoom link that you can find in yesterday's e-news. The other thing is that this week, uh, the pastor's Bible study will begin a new class on the I Am Statements of Jesus that's found in the Gospel of John. I'd invite you to join that on Wednesdays at 10 in the morning or at 6.30 p.m. And the Zoom link and other information that you might need will be in Tuesday's e-news. And now, go forth into this new day, into this new year, and shine Christ's light through your life. And may the unsurpassing love of the Father, the call, the conviction, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, and the grace upon grace of Jesus Christ our Lord be with each one of you. Amen.